Hello and welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin on a drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my crafty fancy. But today we're carrying on with our weaving project so grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. Welcome, welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. As I mentioned in the opening to this video, today we're looking at a weaving project that's been ongoing for a little while now. Um, if you haven't already seen my designing my, the tapestry weaving and getting started videos, I will link to the playlist, I think it's up this side, uh, link to the playlist for those there. If you are weaving along, by all means, pause and gather all your bits and pieces because we're actually looking at sumac today, which is a different technique to the technique we used last time around. And uh, yeah, let's uh, get the camera moved around and we'll get going. Okay, so I've got my loom lying on the table so that you can see where I'm up to as I'm working at the bottom of the tapestry. As I get further up, I'll probably end up leaning it on my knees like I usually do. Um, just because it's easier for me to work that way, but I want you to be able to see what I'm going on with. And I've already wound up into butterflies uh, most of my dark green yarn so we'll see if we've got enough of that for this uh, next hill which is going to be this hill here which we're going to do in a sumac technique so this gives like a, a braided uh, appearance to to the weave um, so it's uh, another way to play around with textures we've obviously got the mohair and fingering weight yarn held together here for the, the tabby weave so yeah a nice bit of contrast with the sumac here. So let's uh, just move a few bits and pieces out of the way. We don't need our beater and our scissors on top of our weaving. And um, we're just going to start with one butterfly at a time. So I'm just going to lay in this first um, bit of, of yarn and tuck the end to the back. It doesn't matter hugely uh, which way, which shed you put the, the yarn in at this point because of the way sumac works we're not going to be weaving in the same way as we were for the plain weave over here so for sumac i'm going to loom, loop my yarn over the top and pick up one warp thread and pass my butterfly under the thread and through the loop and then i'm going to pull it down and i'm going to do the same for the next warp thread so i'm going to Pick up my warp thread, loop my yarn over the top and pass my butterfly under the warp and through the loop and keep going across in the same way. So I'm going to do a few rows of this um, and show you what it looks like. So I'm going to be going back and forth and when you get into the rhythm of it um, it becomes quite straightforward. So as you can see, I'm looping the yarn with my thumb and passing it the butterfly around the warp and through. We are going to need to beat this down the same as any other, but I'm going to put a full row in first. It's a good way to uh, create dividing lines in weaving. Um, it's a good way to do outlines in weaving if you don't want to do the plain weave like I've done here. And I just enjoy the texture of it. Okay, so I've got a few rows of this worked. And uh, then I'll come back and show you what it looks like and show you how I go in the other direction. Once we're a little bit further away from the wire knot fringing at the bottom here. Okay, so I've worked a few rows now. I'm just coming to the end of this row going from my left to right um, so I'm going around my thumb under and through all the way across like with the the previous row that I showed you and I'm going all the way across to the edge of this tabby hill um, just as I would with any other form of weaving um, and in a moment I'm going to be going back the other way so I'll show you how I do that um, and I'm also trying to show you the texture that this weave is producing. Um, I do have some heavier weight yarn to 
show you how it works as well because I don't know how clear it's going to be with this weight of yarn on the screen. Um, I'll obviously take the heavier weight out after I've shown you. Okay, so I've got all the way across. Uh, let's do one more warp. All the way across to uh, where it meets the plain weave hill. It's going to beat that row down. So to come back the other way, it works in the same sort of process. The only difference is the loop is going on the other side of the warp. So if I pick this first warp up, whereas before we were looping around this thumb, we want to go in the other direction. So we're going to loop around this way and send the yarn around the warp and through. So I'm holding it with my finger rather than my thumb. Um, so the purpose of having them go in the different directions is to send the loop in the pointing in the other direction. So it'll be in a bit of a slope because you're sending the, the yarn through under the loop, through the middle of the loop. So when I'm going from left to right, my loop is pointing up towards the right. And when I go from right to left, it's pointing up towards the left. So the two rows together create little Vs, which gives a kind of braided appearance to the weave. So as you can see, it's a relatively quick technique. And I'm getting some coverage with uh, just this thin yarn fairly quickly. So I'll just continue doing this row in the same way. Hopefully there's not too much noise coming from outside. I'm trying to get this done before I lose the light completely because the weather has been absolutely bonkers for the past few days. Um, lots of wind, lots of rain, lots of thunder and lightning, lots of sunshine and a few hailstones. So it really has been all over the place. Um, so yes, I'm probably not going to end up showing you the whole hill today. I will film um, another point once I've finished the hill so you can see what it all looks like once it's done. Um, but I don't think I'm going to get it all done before I lose the light and before it gets way too noisy outside. Um, but that's May in the UK for you. Okay, so I'm just going to pause mid-row um, for the moment. Um, and just show you what I mean by pointing in the different directions. So I've got this cotton yarn here that's left over from working dishcloth, so it's a much thicker yarn, much heavier weight. <coughs> so it's a much heavier weight yarn, I think it's an Aran weight, uh, worst weight, that kind of weight. So I'm just going to demonstrate this a bit higher up for you. Um, so I'm just going to lay in my tail. I'm not going to worry too much about popping it to the back just as this is for demonstration purposes. But as it's a heavier weight yarn, I'm going to go over a few more warps. So let's go over two warps at a time. So from left to right, we're going around the left hand side of the warp. So I'll put a few of those in. And hopefully you'll start to see what I mean by the sloping happening. It's going to slope up to the, the right. So it's not got anything to anchor it against at the moment. So this is a little fiddly, but you obviously wouldn't normally uh, be doing a random row of sumac in the middle of your weaving. So let's do a couple more. And hopefully you'll be able to see what I mean. Okay, so if I just straighten those up. So you should be able to see that the weave is going pointing up that direction. So if I come back in the other way, so I'm going to loop around the other side. This is going to make the next row lean up to the left. Yes, I do have a slightly wonky stitch at the end. 
slightly wonky moment where I change direction. That's not going to show so much mid weave because uh, it's going to blend in with the plain weave next to it. Uh, and it's also not going to be as obvious if it's on the side of the weaving. I'm just going to get this over to the edge. Okay, so you can see now that the second row, they're pointing upwards in the other direction. So we get this sort of braided texture and uh, that little stitch on the end will, on the edge of a weaving, will just sort of flip around the edge, uh, sit neatly on the edge of the weaving and as I say, it'll blend in with the weaving that's next to it in, in uh, the middle of a weave. Okay, so here's a closer look at that dark green sumac weaving and as you can see the lines of the stitch forming up in nice neat rows and the way that texture is is forming within that dark green yarn. If I just move you, hopefully none of you get seasick, and if I just move you over slightly, this is the texture of the tabby weave that we did with the mohair last time round and this is the sumac here. So you can see the contrast in the, the texture and that's really what I'm interested in for this particular weaving is playing with colour, yes, and it's creating a scene, yes, um, but it is also playing with texture. So I'm going to take this cotton out in a moment and I'm going to carry on with this sumac weaving to fill in this hill. The aim, as I did with the tabby weave, is to follow this line here. Um, I am um, uncertain as to whether I've got quite enough of this yarn left to fill the whole space in, so I may end up stopping the hill a little bit early and bringing these hills down a bit, so extending the length of those. I mean, that's fine. I designed it anyway, so it doesn't matter if I change it. Um, but that that's the plan. So next time I film the weaving, I should have this all filled in and outlined uh, to show you and be ready to moving on to the stripes. So I hope you found that useful and interesting. As I say, the next time I film a weaving video, it'll be the striped hill plus some additional footage of that finished sumac hill for you as well. So if you've enjoyed spending time in my company, like and subscribe down below and uh, ding that bell for notifications so you don't miss out on that next weaving video. I aim to put a video out every weekend. Once a month is a roundup of the things that I've been working on and in between times it's videos a bit more like this. Uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd love to see you in the next one. And I'd also like to know what you're getting on with as well. So drop a comment down below to let me know if you're weaving along or if you're working on a different project as well and how that's going for you. I will see you next time. But until then, happy crafting and bye-bye for now.